Hello. Welcome to Key Philosophies. Today, we're going to talk about the Avatar according to the perspective of MT, who is a an initiate, a proclaimed initiate. And we will see what that means in relationship to densities and the rays and offices that we spoke on that we spoke on earlier so let us begin yes we did uh i said not not apprentice and master but adept and master the last one so the avatar in order to understand what an avatar is, it's first necessary to understand the much-discussed matter of correlation between densities and stages of spiritual development. For a definition of densities, see the dictionary in this volume. Suffice here to say that density in metaphysics ter metaphysical terms doesn't correspond to conventional definitions of inertia, viscosity, or opacity, or any of those commonly discussed ideals of, you know, volume. Indeed, density in the metaphysical sense correlates positively to the degree of perceptual or cognitive subtlety. It refers to the quotient of formal limitation integrated through coordinates of the variable cognitive grid network. Determining the available intensity of total energy information coded for the given volume. Third density, the one you are presently experiencing, tends to tell us things are fixed and solid. Fourth density allows us to perceive such solidity as an energetic kind of fluid kaleidoscopic coagulation. Fifth density allows us to behold all things, whether apparently solid or not, as coordinative fields of geometri geometrized light networks. So the fifth density allows us to behold things, whether apparently solid or not, as coordinative fields of geometri geometrized light networks. It's a funny word. Six tends toward direct knowledge of such light composites as self-luminous, as the self-luminous idea, light from my planet and so forth and therefore as themselves idea form patterns of the permissive cognitive grid network. You guys paradigming? Each such density level carries as its chief importance a reigning quotient of allowable insight or intuition with respect to reality as a whole. This quotient correlates with the compositional quality cited above. The stages of spiritual development are given in the context of third density embodiment. Each successive stage above third ordinary mind, third stage density, corresponding to its numerically parallel density. This means that authentic initiation to the higher stages in third density context succeeds at each step in realigning the focused mind-body coordinates of the subject so as to allow into the formerly screened third density framework the class of insight, intuition, indicative of the numerically parallel density depending on the type, class, or school of initiation. These coordinative realignments may relink the respective densities in such a way as to permit direct perception interaction as with 
subtle faculties and or direct insight knowledge participating in the available essence of the opened density. This correlation between stage and density holds until we get to the question of seventh stage initiatic awakening and the corresponding seventh density. While there are authentic masters of a seventh stage awakening, these are extremely rare. For more, far more than schools and traditional perennials claim. All these groups claiming to have the awakened teacher bringing about the new paradigm. And may properly be considered avatars. Moreover, these seventh stage initiates do not correspond in themselves to the seventh density, and this is where the otherwise perfect correlation of stages and densities breaks down. So, the reason for this is that seventh density does not properly incarnate a personality, expression, or divine representative from its own level. Since seventh density isn't so much a successive step in the octave hierarchy and thus higher and removed as it is the luminance of logoic divinity within everything, a seventh stage being, i.e. a master of authentic seventh stage initiation appearing in third density context is recruited by the totality of the seventh density godhead from the ranks of personality expressions thoroughly integrated with as oversoul consciousness of sixth density. Reminds me of some Solomon stories. In terms of initiatory Kabbalism, all doers are recruited from the sphere of primum mobile, or the sephirah of chakma. The zodiacal symbolization of this sphere may thus be thoroughly understood with reference to Southern Crown Dictionary. Subheading breath soul. Yeah, here on the left you'll see these corresponding density and initiatory stages. The third, fourth corresponding with the fourth, and fifth with the fifth, and then the sixth has this issue. Maybe, maybe false teachers or whatnot, but you know that's uh that could also be seen as part of the function. Functionaries, remember. Seventh density is properly beyond either I or we, and so incarnates a sublime function of its overall process on behalf of the whole by recruiting from the nearest Jason density that does supply the necessary eyes and we's. So it's like pulling from a pool. Maybe it's like a lottery. For individuated incarnation, one may ask if seventh density represents in some sense the totality of the Godhead, why doesn't it just manufacture the necessary I-ness out of itself to incarnate among the multitudes? Right? And the answer is, of course, that it does precisely that. That's what sixth density oversoul consciousness and its ancillary personality expressions are. Properly understood, this description supplies adequate resolution to the perennial contention between those who look upon Kether, crown of Macroposopus, seventh density, etc., as the necessary origin of avataric expressions incarnating below, and those who insist that, once merging with Kether, seventh density, such one goes forth no more again. 
the seventh stage initiate then is a master who's also inevitably an avatar and is one recruited out of the sixth density by seventh density godhead totality to serve a specific universal function in and through the lower worlds on behalf of the whole. Such a sixth density projective expression from oversoul consciousness recruited as avatar for a time and place is therefore ever the minister of Hur Pa Kraat, the Lord of Silence, who goes not out at all. I, I say uh, that there, the Hur Pa Krat. I think, I think that's what uh, it says in uh, these Thelemic books. I'll have to reference that later. It should be evident from all the foregoing that an adept may also be considered or function as a teacher. Whereas a teacher in himself isn't an adept. That a master may also refer to himself or be referred to as an adept, but that an adept in and of himself is not a master. It should be evident that an avatar is also and at the same time automatically a master, while a master in himself is not automatically an avatar. This then is the first piece of verboten information brought to you courtesy of Matrix 4 for the knowledge of the truth regarding teachers, adepts, and masters, and avatars is far more subversive than spilled information regarding secret government pacts with space aliens, the long-time furtive use of alternative energies by the phantom power structure, or even the existence of such power structure itself. Indeed, we may here submit that unexpected tolerance for the continued existence of such publicly indispensable media as the earlier Matrix volumes and Leading Edge, etc., might well be attributed to the inevitable shift in attention toward that power structure which the freeing of our information has caused. Once the chagrin of exposure has passed, it's perfectly plausible that the power structure smugly dotes on that attention. After all, how intolerable that its hijinks in pulling the wool over your eyes has gone on for so long without receipt of proper credit from the victimized consciousness in question. Far better it may now be to have attention turned, no matter how ruefully, to the shadow government perpetrators, which exacerbated attention regardless how angered still constitutes inadvertent tribute, than to have it roused to awareness of the real truth of your existence. For the primary reality is that the spiritual truth, the spiritual facts, and the spiritual purpose of your existence here altogether. It doesn't lie basically in the regrettable fact of government duplicity, some pending takeover by the Antichrist and his kin, or in knowledge of the invisible air pollution by armadas of beings elsewhere. No, the truly dangerous knowledge is presented here, and as we've argued uniquely here in this book. Your previous Matrix volume should be kept and consulted. Let's see. Yeah, that pretty much covers that with the Avatar. Great source of material. Great stuff to talk about. And next time... We will read from Flower Life Paradigm. So, tell me what you think about these things. Because, well, I don't know. I'm just here talking to myself. But if you enjoyed it, please give me a like and a subscribe and whatnot. And 
have a good day at least. Bye.